Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the program today, Nevada political kingmaker Sig Rogich. Sig Rogich is one of Nevada's most powerful political consultants, counseling people such as former President George Bush, Kenny Gwynn, and current gubernatorial candidate Jim Gibbons. Sam? And coming up on the Power Pundit panel today, Teresa Benitez Thompson, Ray Bacon, and Chris Wicker. It's all coming up next on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, just 10 minutes east of Sparks. We're proud that Walmart and other Fortune 500 companies have chosen Tahoe Reno Industrial Center to relocate their businesses. We have sites from under five acres to well over 500 acres, and with all of the amenities that every successful corporation requires. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, and we're building economic prosperity for Nevadans. Something spectacular has taken wing not far from Reno or Lake Tahoe, and never far from your mind. An escape of fine dining and legendary golf. Introducing the resort at Red Hawk. And at the center of it all, we've feathered our nest with new villas that have elevated Red Hawk to the status of a premier resort. The Resort at Red Hawk, a beautiful new arrival in northern Nevada. As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by employer links can uncover criminal records like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call employer links. <sighs> employer links. Protecting your investment. I tell you, John, this industry has really changed. Tell me about it. You seem to do pretty well last year. What's your secret? <laughs> no secrets. Although, I'll tell you something. The smartest thing I did was sign up with Pro Group Management. Really? Yeah, they uh, do workers' comp, right? Yeah, their services are great. Hmm. And get this, they saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. That works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. You are watching Nevada Newsmakers. Good afternoon. Here we are in Nevada Newsmakers. Down in Las Vegas via satellite, we have Sam Shad and Sig Rogich. Sam? Thank you very much, Paul. Sig is president of Rogich Communications, uh, former ambassador to Iceland and uh, former advisor to President Reagan, President Bush, and uh, a legend in Nevada politics. Let's start out with uh, uh, the national scene, if we could. Um, the, the administration appears to have just a huge list of problems right now, from Iraq to Katrina, uh, appointees, uh, them being accused of cronyism, the deficit, immigration, Harriet Myers. You want to start down that list and, 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 and address? I don't think you forgot anything, Sam. Well, I, I didn't bring up Tom Delay and Bill Frist yet, <laughs> but I was going there. Well, I'll tell you what happens, you know, in a second-term presidency. You have a tendency to have problems historically. Uh, that's, uh, that's just the way it's been. But I think as a practical matter, Republicans have lost their compass a little bit. They've lost the fact that they are elected to balance budgets, uh, cut spending, and uh, now they've got the largest deficit in American history, and they are spending more money than anybody uh, in, in recent memory. And they need to get back to that. I say the same thing about Democrats. Democrats used to be a party of big ideas. You know, uh, the Social Security and uh, the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964 and Medicaid and Medicare. And now they're viewed as a party that it's an obstructionist fighting party. I think the parties need to get back to the big debate and the big picture. I think the president will get through this. I believe that. I think Americans are changing their opinion now that it's pretty tough to blame the president for Katrina. I do think the big statement they should make is that we're not going to allow people to build below sea level, whether it's Louisiana or Florida or North Carolina. Uh, we're not going to insure homes like that uh, if people are going to build in harm's way. Why should the American people pay that burden? 
And I think that'll be kind of a, a, a statement of fact, I predict, in the weeks and months ahead when they start to rebuild Louisiana. You know, Mississippi, by the way, I was there recently with Governor Barber. It's equally as bad. You look at those gorgeous homes that are historically significant in this country, and they're all gone. And so they need as much help as, uh, as Louisiana does. But it's a uh, moment in time that we'll never see again, hopefully. And um, I think that that's what brings the nation together, and that's what causes people to rally around their president. And uh, having said that, uh, I think Myers... that's not really happening right now. Well, it takes a while. You know, they, this is an ebb and flow, peaks and valleys. I, uh, yesterday's news is old news. And uh, I always say that, uh, you know, uh, uh, riding high in April, shot down in May, especially in the White House. I worked there for four years. Although I changed it to ride and hide at 8 o'clock, shot down at 8.15. <laughs> That's how bad it was. <laughs> Mr. Huh? Rogich, how is this going to affect the midterm elections in 2006? Do you think this is going to have a, a detrimental impact on the Republicans, all the problems that Sam just mentioned, from Iraq to Katrina to Tom DeLay and Bill Frist? Well, I think that it could. I, I, uh, I happen to think that Bill Frist will be okay. I mean, uh, I know him quite well. I know that uh, it, it, there's a technical violation there, and I don't even think that that exists. I think he'll get through it. Uh, Tom DeLay, uh, if you look at the history of the uh, Attorney General in Texas and what he's done, he's indicted every leading Republican elected office holder almost in the state's history since he's been in office. I think there's a lot of politics with that. And I think that uh, it might read well today if there is a connector there that shows that this thing is not a fair, uh, then it could work to backfire against him. Having said that, I think the Republicans need to get back to what they do. They need to balance budgets and cut taxes and get back to the core of what makes them a party that's different from the Democratic Party. Uh, and if they don't do that, they're going to lose uh, enthusiasm at the polls in 2006. And that traditional bump in voter turnout that Republicans have in the off-election years might not happen. And that could change the dynamic. Do I think they're going to lose the Senate or the House? I think there's a potential for some significant changes in the Senate if you go through those races that are up for election this time. Uh, in the House side, I think it's pretty difficult. You know, it's very tough for uh, congressmen and women to lose their seats unless there's scandal involved, unless there's some other overlying reason to get rid of them. So I think we're going to be okay in the House. Uh, but the President, I think, is clearly going through some tough times, no question about it. I think the Supreme Court nomination I was asked about earlier here, I think it's a good nomination. Why? Uh, because uh, I don't think you have to have a lifetime jurist, you know, on the Supreme Court. Uh, Frankfurter was an extraordinary justice in our history, and uh, he wasn't uh, in the court before, before he was appointed. I think the fact of the matter is that she will survive. I certainly hope she does, and uh, I think she'll be good for the court. Uh, and merely because that she's not a judge. Well, no. I mean, what, what, what more do you know about her that you can share with us that, that makes you have that level of confidence? And, and in addition, you know, the, the president appears to have just completely turned on his conservative base. Well, uh, a friend of mine told me one time, uh, if, if the conservative base doesn't like it, the president should say, well, I'm not going to fill the seat at all. We'll just wait till the next election cycle, let someone else fill it. He doesn't have to fill the seat, you know. Uh, he's not going to do that, but uh, to, to be uh, just funny about the whole issue. I don't think he's turned on his conservative <laughs> base. Uh, Pat Buchanan I, would disagree with you. Well, there's others that, that are taking the opposite point of view of Pat Buchanan. Pat Buchanan has been a naysayer, you know, since 1984. Uh, I like him. I know him. I worked with him. Uh, but this is nothing new for Pat Buchanan. Why should we, as Republicans, ask for a litmus test, you know, when on the other side of the aisle we argue that Democrats shouldn't ask for the litmus test? I mean, it gets, Ken's got to cut both ways. You know, and, and to be honest with you, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying that this president uh, pretty much assured uh, the faith-based faith conservatives um, and, and the extreme right wing of the party that w there were going to be changes on the, on the Supreme Court and that it was going to move more towards a Clarence Thomas, um, uh, Antonin Scalia type uh, uh, justice. And now we seem to have somebody who appears to be a moderate. Well, I, you know, I think she is moderate to conservative. I think she has good credentials. I only know her uh, in passing. I don't have a, a personal relationship with her. I know she's competent. I know that uh, she's been extraordinary as a, a female uh, in the state of Texas to rise to the levels that she did shows her competence and her intellectual ability. Uh, having said that, I think that uh, she'll survive. I think she'll get it uh, uh, approved by the Senate. and. Uh, 
I think this will be viewed as a very good appointment by the president. Okay, on okay, that we're note, we're going to be right back on. <laughs> Sorry about that, Sam. Stepping <laughs> on you. On that note, we're just going to have to uh, wrap that up for now, and we'll come back right after these messages. For a videotape copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. For more than a decade, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has been helping the community embrace conservation as a way of life. That includes replacing more than 50 million square feet of grass with water-smart landscaping. During the worst drought on record, watering restrictions and tough landscaping codes have reduced the community's water use by billions of gallons, even as thousands of new residents were moving into Nevada. That's smart water management, and that's our promise to Nevada. Reno's best dining values are all at one casino, the Pepper Mill. You can enjoy great savings on our popular specials. Pepper Mill's Coffee Shop offers daily lunch specials, low-carb dining, and all your favorite comfort foods. You'll find sensational lunch specials featuring Reno's freshest seafood, sushi, pasta, and more at Oceano. And early bird specials at Reno's Premier Steakhouse and Romanza Ristorante Italiano. The best values are at the Pepper Mill. Where are you dining? Island Inkjet is now open on South Meadows Parkway. Island Inkjet will refill your inkjet cartridges in just one hour. We have the ink to precisely match over 240 cartridges, saving you up to 60% on the cost of buying a new cartridge. Our work is 100% guaranteed, and contrary to what you may have heard, refills do not void any printer warranties. You don't throw out your car when it runs out of gas. Don't throw out your cartridges. Refill them at Island Inkjet on South Meadows Parkway by Smith's. The materials we rely on every day come from the ground, and modern mining technology brings them to us cleaner and safer than ever before. To learn more about America's natural resources, visit nma.org, the National Mining Association. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. We're in the middle of an interview with Sig Rogich. Sam Shad is interviewing him down in Las Vegas. Sam? Thanks very much, Paul. Okay, Sig, let's dive into some statewide politics here. You're supporting Jim Gibbons, correct, yes. in the governor's race. Um, we've had the governor, and uh, we've also had Jim Rogers, owner of Sunbelt Communications, upon which these programs air, uh, come out against Jim, Jim Gibbons. Why are you supporting him, and what's wrong with uh, what the governor's thinking and what Jim Rogers is thinking? Well, I mean, I've known Jim Gibbons a long time. I think he's done a, a, a very, very good job in the Congress. Uh, I think there are differences, naturally, between, uh, especially between the governor and, and Jim Gibbons, uh, particularly as it related to the tax uh, hikes. Um, but I'm hopeful they'll get through that. Um, I, I sit as the National Finance Chairman for the Republican Governors Association. My job is to help elect Republican governors. Um, I happen to think that Jim Gibbons is the best candidate for governor. Right. And well, I think he has the experience, the know-how. I think uh, he's uh, legislatively been active when he was in the state. I think he's been a good congressman. I think he's electable. Uh, he's got a great base of support. You know, he's been elected five times by almost 90% of the vote. Uh, there's no significant reason why people wouldn't vote for him again. So I think he'll come down here uh, with, a, with a major voter base out of Washoe County. Uh, I think he'll exceed what the president did. I think the president got 7,000 vote plurality in Washoe. I think Jim Gibbons could do two or three or four times that, that much. I think out of rural Nevada, the president got 40,000 vote plurality. I think Jim Gibbons has the potential to do more than that. And I think coming into southern Nevada then uh, with a base like that, and as well as he's done down here in his elections running in that district, I think he'll be very tough to beat. Mr. Rogic, you've, uh, you've been tied to the gaming industry for a large portion of your career, yet there's been a lack of support for uh, Mr. Gibbons. Do you see any support going his way? And if not, where will that support go for the gubernatorial race? Well, there is not a lack of support for Jim Gibbons. He's actually had uh, very good support in the gaming industry. Uh, the people I've talked to, uh, the major properties, uh, they have not turned their back on Jim Gibbons in any way. Uh, they've they've uh, contributed to him. Uh, we have contributions in hand. I think we're probably uh, 
north of $2 million raised so far, and we're hopeful will be as much as uh, $3 million by the end of the year. Um, we've had no one say no to us. Uh, we've had some that have said that we're going to support both sides equally, uh, particularly when Richard Perkins was running, uh, and that's, uh, that's probably changed now. But uh, we have good support. We have talked to the uh, major properties, and I would expect we would have significant support in the community. What, uh, what uh, dynamic does Jim Gibson bring to the race? You know, people who have been around a long time are very familiar with him and his father, but there's an awful lot of newcomers, and, and I think that there's going to have to be a ton of money spent uh, for name recognition alone for him. For Jim uh, Gibson. Well, he's, a, he's just a very good mayor. I mean, he's articulate and eloquent, and uh, there's going to have to be a lot of money spent, no question about it. And uh, the problem he faces is that he is uh, probably more conservative and probably more supportive of Republican ideology than the Democratic Party would like to see. Um, so, and I think that Dina Titus is right as she is, and she's very, very smart and fun to be around in that regard. I think that she'll point those, uh, those differences out between her and between him. Um, it's too soon to say, you know, uh, victory is fleeting and so is defeat in today's world. And um, uh, I think that uh, this thing will play itself out uh, to, in a much, in an unusual kind of way as you watch the campaign unfold here in the next 12, 13 months. But I think right now it's Jim Gibbons' campaign to lose. I think that uh, if he works as hard as I know as he's working, uh, if he continues to shore up his base of support, um, I think that he'll be a tough candidate to beat. Uh, I don't know that he can ever mend all the fences that he has, you know, but um, that's just the way it is in politics sometimes. You can't do it. I do know that from adversity comes some strength. I mean, the president and John McCain don't see eye to eye on a lot of issues, but on the significant ones they came together. And I know more than anything else that uh, our governor, who's been extraordinary uh, as a governor in my opinion in the last eight years, cares about the state. So if they can find a common ground where the governor uh, has assurances that what he believes in is not going to go and come unraveled, then I think there's a chance for some uh, reconciliation. Uh, he, I know that Jim Gibbons has met with Jim Rogers. I know Jim's concerns are education. Uh, I sit as head of the Education Foundation down here for all of Clark County. I wouldn't be in this campaign if I didn't have assurances from Jim Gibbons that his commitment is true to education. Uh, and I'll probably help and coordinate and draft that education policy when the time comes to announce what we're going to do. So I think he'll be on the right side of the important things of the state. We've got to educate people. We've got to create a workforce that we're not going to continue to grow like this or have the resources to fill the job needs that are here in Southern Nevada. And I think that Jim Gibbons understands that as well as anyone I've talked to. Uh, and I think that he'll be okay in the final analysis. Okay, Paul. Uh, Mr. Rogich, <clears throat> sorry. In the 2002 cycle, there was a Republican sweep of all the constitutional offices. Do you see anything like that happening again in the 2006 election cycle? Well, that's a good question, Paul. I tell you, it was a, it's, a, uh, it's a state that's pretty evenly divided across the board. You know, um, if you count the rural county vote, you know, they tend to vote Republican more, and even the Democrat registered in those rural communities vote Republican. So it's tough to say. I, I think that these are races now because there's so many open seats that you're going to find it's the measure of who the best candidate is, not what the party affiliation is. Uh, it's going to look to significant people who uh, are committed, are, can articulate their issues well. So I think it's wide open. Uh, I don't think that uh, anything is a lock right now. And you, I know Bob Miller's son is going to run for statewide seat. Uh, I think our state treasurer is going to run, uh, Krolicki is going to run for lieutenant governor. Uh, we've got... Uh, last, last quick question. Yeah. Kathy Augustine, finished? Well, uh, I... I uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a one-word answer. Is that a yes or no? Uh, I would say, I, no, I think it's more than one word. I would say that uh, it's going to be very difficult for her oh. to... Uh, on that to note, we have to... So, sorry to interrupt, but on that note, we have to go. We'll be right back with the Pundit panel. Sam, Sig, thank you very much. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Corporations moving to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center require reliable power, fiber optic communication, and clean water sources. And yet, there's another amenity we're very proud of here at TRI, rail service. So far, we've built over two miles of railroad track, and another 3.6 is under construction. When companies need to transport freight, we're going to help them move it quickly, 
and efficiently. Welcome to the Tajarino Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevadans. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers encourages the responsible consumption of beer. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association are sponsors and participants in many community-based efforts such as school education programs, safe ride home, recycling programs, alcohol-free after-prom and graduation parties, safe voting campaigns, and designated driver programs. They are family-owned businesses employing 2,000 Nevadans. They also collect and pay the state excise tax. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association, delivering more than just beer. You are watching Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers, our Power Pundit panel. We have Ray Bacon with the Nevada Manufacturers Association, former Miss Nevada, Teresa Benitez-Thompson, and Washoe County Democrat, Chris Wicker. Um, we just watched the interview with Sig Rogic. He said that the gubernatorial race is Jim's to lose. Chris, do you agree with that? Well, I think, uh, I don't quite agree with that, but I think Gibbons has a very strong position. And I think what uh, a good strategy to be would be to tie Gibbons to his uh, unaltering support of the Bush administration. And I think that will help uh, drag him down amongst many voters. I think that people aren't giving enough credit to the type of campaign Dina Titus is putting together and how much support she's garnering and, and how she can really touch into certain aspects of the electorate that Gibbons might not be able. I'm, I'm still thinking that um, it's his to win from Dina. Ray? I think that this is a very, very open race at this stage of the game. I heard what Sig said on the gaming support, but simultaneously, Lorraine comes from that industry. She has commitments from the gaming industry to some degree. Uh, I think that you're going to see Jim Gibson get a substantial chunk of support from the gaming industry, and so consequently, uh, it's going to be, I think this is a far from over race. I don't believe that anybody at this stage of the game has the odds on favorite, if you will. Well, and if somebody like the former governor and, and somebody prominent like Jim Rogers, you know, we all remember what Jim Rogers said about uh, Jim Gibbons, that the guy simply wasn't bright enough to be governor. Well, and, and that was really unfair on his part. Well, I, you know, I think he was speaking from the heart and what he believed to be true. And so that kind of uh, backhanded support from prominent Republicans is going to be a major problem for Gibbons. But is, is Jim Rogers a Republican, too? That's never, been, <laughs> that's never been confirmed. Well, he was, but he's not anymore. We know that. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go down to Clark County. This last election, 2004 election cycle, the voters approved by 52% margin to put a sales tax increase to fund more police on the street. However, now the police union is turning around and saying they're not going to use that revenue for more police officers, but to give themselves raises. Um, the county commission has adamantly opposed this. And they've even gone so far as to suggest taking Tom Collins, a county commissioner, off the negotiating committee. Ray, what do you think the consequences are of doing that? Well, I, I think across the board, one of the issues that, that comes up, and it's not strictly Nevada, quite frankly, it's what Schwarzenegger is going through in California. Public employee pay, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, was routinely substantially lower than the private sector pay. And as such, the benefit package was, was much better, the retirement package was much better. The pay in most cases now, especially for the public safety employees, is very competitive with the private sector pay. And so all of a sudden we're in a situation where the public sector employees and the public sector unions are about ready to start challenging our whole lifestyle with, with some of their pay packages and issues have to change. NRS 288, which is the public employee labor law, probably needs revision in the state of Nevada. Chris, what do you Well, I think Ray just vastly overstates the impact of that. And I sympathize with the, the police union in wanting to have uh, increase their pay. But I think you have to be very careful when you pass a bond issue with the voters. I think you have to be true to what the voters think they're voting for. And I think it's a, probably a mistake to, to get a voter-approved bond issue and then try to divert it to a different use than that they voted for. So I, I think, while well, I sympathize with the police union, I think it's a mistake if that's what they voted for. I have to agree and say that it comes back to voter intent and why did the people of Las Vegas sincerely show up to vote to support these additional funds and resources to the police department? Did they walk in thinking, yes, these men in blue need a higher paycheck or did they walk in thinking we need more resources to fight methamphetamine, to fight crimes, we need more resources to protect our streets? And um, I think it comes back to that voter intent. Okay, let's get to some national uh, national issues now. Uh, Harriet Myers been nominated for the Supreme Court. 
seems like most of the flack the president is getting is from his own side. Uh, Chris, do you think that Harriet's going to have a tough time getting confirmed by the Republican-controlled Senate? Well, you know, if it wasn't such a darn serious issue, it was almost comic what we're seeing here. And, and what we're seeing is just terrible hypocrisy on the part of the conservatives who, when, uh, when uh, the prior candidate was up for the Supreme Court, they're telling the Democrats, no, you can't ask this candidate what their position is on important issues. Well, but that happens now, on both now sides. Well, now that's what I'm saying. Now they're showing their hypocrisy by saying, well, we've got to be sure we know what Harriet Meyer says on these issues. Uh, just the opposite of what they're saying when they thought they had somebody in the bag. Now, Harriet Myers, uh, you know, President Bush is trotting out her uh, religious background to try to calm the conservatives. And, and I think that's kind of uh, troubling because uh, I, I think religion, again, shouldn't. I mean, it's wonderful that she's a very religious person, but I don't think that's a reason for nominating somebody to the Supreme Court. Let me, let me right. chime in on this. One of the things that Harriet Myers did in Texas, she was very deeply involved in the tort reform issues in Texas. She has been involved in trying to bring fairness and equity to the entire tort system. That probably is the strongest thing that she brings to the court. She brings a business background, she brings a business perspective, and quite frankly, I, for one, think she's probably going to wind up being a very good justice. We are very lacking with people that have a business background in that court right now, and she will be a refreshing change. Just my own two cents. I think the Republicans have absolutely created the bed that they're lying in right now. If the president had come forth and said, look, if you reelect me, when it comes time to nominate Supreme Court justices, I promise to put forth the best candidates to make good law that I can find. Um, but that wasn't the promise he made. He made promises to conservatives that he's going to try and push a certain agenda and, and absolutely get a uh, candidate into the Supreme Court who would be overtly partisan. And so he's so created the situation where he's not he's the best in. candidate that he could find. I think that John Roberts is a quality candidate, but I think that what Bush did by making promises to a very conservative um, constituency is saying that conservatism is first and foremost most important and credentials and merit is second. Okay, we're going to have to wrap it up on that note. Thank you very much. <laughs>